Hi there, this is Andrew Brody with Yokogawa's Network Solutions Group. Today I'm going to talk to you about setting up a couple of simple channels and even a totalizer on the Yokogawa DAC station. And to get started right away, I've got my uh, default unit up here as it would arrive from the factory. Uh, I've got a thermocouple type T hooked up to channel 1 and I've got a uh, 1 to 5 volt uh, current so or voltage source on uh, channel 2. You can see it's currently reading 1 volts but none of the channels have been configured. So to get going, first of all make sure your recorders in the stop position. You can see that up at the top there's going to be a little red thing said stop. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit menu on the front of the system. This is going to bring up the basic uh, menu that you'd see in stuff like our version R3 firmware or version R4 firmware on stuff like our DAC station 2000. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to measurement channel. I'm going to go over. I'm going to go range alarm. And right here I got channel 1. So I'm going to edit channel 1. I'm going to go down to volts here. And I'm going to pick the gray button that's under the TC down at the bottom on my DAC station. So when I do that, it's going to bring up range. And then I'm going to go next. And I'm going to pick type T thermocouple down in the bottom. And it's automatically going to bring in the uh, degrees Fahrenheit uh, range for a type T thermocouple. Now certainly if you want to kind of reduce this to whatever scope you've got in your office, like in this case I've got a home office going on, I can go ahead and uh, hit the input button down at the bottom. And then uh, essentially I'm just going to go zeros across there. I hope it never gets colder than a zero in my home office. So I'm going to hit that. And then uh, right there, I'm going to go ahead and hit the input button there. And I'm going to go over zero, zero, zero. And uh, I'm going to hope it uh, never gets above uh, 90 in my home office as well. And I'm going to hit enter there. If for some reason it's showing up as a uh, default uh, Celsius, type range up there for type T thermocouple, it means that I probably haven't gone into my basic settings environment uh, environment settings and gone ahead and changed that from the default that ships from the factory, which is usually Celsius, over to Fahrenheit. If that is the case and yours is kind of showing Celsius spans instead of Fahrenheit spans when you pick a thermocouple or an RTD, make sure you go into basic setting mode. You get that by hitting the menu key and then holding the function key down for three seconds. That'll send you to basic setting mode. Under in the environment tab, you can go ahead and change that. Uh, make sure this is one of the first things you do when you get it from the factory is pick Celsius or Fahrenheit. Like I said, default it'll ship Celsius, but for most people you want to ship uh, change it to Fahrenheit. You got to change this right up front on the recorder, otherwise uh, it's going to essentially reset all your settings at this level if later on you decide to change it from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Okay, so once I've got that, I can go down to the bottom and pick uh, alarms if I want to do that. So I'm going to go on for the first alarm. I'm going to set a high alarm and I'm going to go over here to input and I'm going to go and uh, input something like 80. If it gets above 80 in my office, that's probably just a little too hot. Under relays, I can go on if I want. If you see stuff like I010203, if you purchased your unit with the alarm relay option, this will correspond to terminals on the back of your unit. So you can actually fire off relays when it goes into alarm. If I hit the next button here down in the bottom right corner a few times, we'll start seeing S's come up. S1, S2, S3. These are internal memory switches that you can later on use for event actions. Okay, so I'm just going to set mine to switch one for now and I'll show you event actions later on that you can tie to these internal memory bits. So essentially if this gets above 80, it's going to fire off an internal memory bit and I'll show you where we can use that later on. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter here. I'm going to escape out. Okay, so that's where we are, measurement channel, range alarm. I'm going to go back into that. See how it's got all my settings there? I'm going to increment the channel by one, so I'm now at channel two. We can see that this is volt. Well, I'm not going to do a voltage. I'm going to make believe that I've got a 4 to 20 milliamp signal hooked up back there. And whenever you hook up a 4 to 20 milliamp signal, you have to drop it across a 250 ohm resistor, precision resistor. Now, these can be ordered from Yokogawa, or uh, hopefully if you're an instrumentation shop, you got some kicking around. All right. And so what you do when you're doing 4 to 20 milliamps is you're going to pick type scale. And even when you're doing like a 1 to 5 voltage input, you're going to pick type scale most of the time anyway. So I'm going to pick scale here. Next thing that's going to come up is, you know, what am I scaling? In this case, since it's a 4 to 20 milliamp coming across a 250 ohm resistor, 
that means it's going to be 1 to 5 volts. So its type is going to be volt. I'm going to pick volt. I'm going to go over here to range. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the 6 volt scale because that's the closest I have. Okay, and by default, that's going to drop me in at minus 6 to plus 6. So then I'm going to hit the input button on that. And I'm just going to go over here and hit 0, 0, 1. Go ahead and hit enter. So that gives me my span lower. Input here. I'm going to arrow over and hit a 5 there. So now I've got 1 to 5 volts. Now this 1 to 5 volts, I can have this to whatever I want for my engineering unit. So in this case, I'm going to go 0. And uh, at the upper scale, I'm going to go ahead and input, you know, uh, 500. Okay. And in this case, it's bringing up an issue that you guys are going to see here. Decimal places count as significant figures. So you know how I got 0.00, .00 as my low scale? So what that's saying is that my highest, my upper scale could be is 300.00. .00. So say I did want to do 500, I have to hit escape here. I got to go back to my lower scale. I got to go input there. And then what I got to do is I got to go 0.0.0. 0, 0, dot, 0. And so what that did there is that puts my one decimal place in my lower scale. You can see how automatically it changed the decimal place on my upper scale, now allowing me to do higher numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and hit input there. And I'm going to go 0, 0500. 0, 0, and that gives me 500 like I was looking. So remember, you got to change it on the lower scale. And then the upper scale inherits the decimal place. And then my unit, I'm going to do this as a flow. So I'm going to say input. And I'm going to go uh, gallons per minute here. G, P, M. OK, so there I've gone. I've taken a 4 to 20 milliamp signal, dropped it across a 250 ohm resistor, giving me 1 to 5 volts. I'm doing a scale lower of 0, scale upper of 500. So on my actual screen, I'll see 0 to 500 for this 1 to 5 or 4 to 20 milliamp signal. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter there. Uh, I could set up alarms on it if I wanted to as well, but I'm not since I already showed you one under thermocouples. I'm going to hit Enter here to change it from yellow to white to save that change. OK, now I'm going to escape out of here. Remember how I said uh, we're going to do a little bit of a, uh, a T-log on that, uh, totalization on it? Let me show you how I'm going to do that. OK, I'm going to go down here to over here to Math Channel. All right, I'm going to go over here to Calculation Expression. OK, and I'm going to go uh, 101 for my first math channel. I'm going to turn it on. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit the input button beside it. And since I'm going to do a, a totalization, I'm going to pick a T log sum. We can see that's under a 9 down here. OK, so let's see here. T, -t log. So you might have to hit the uh, little M over button at the uh, other side to switch between what you're trying to do. But uh, let me just uh, keep hitting uh, 9 here until I get to T log sum. OK, T log sum. OK, we're bringing that in on channel 2. OK, and then we're going to close parentheses on it. OK, so now I'm totalizing that channel 2 that I brought in. All right, and as far as uh, my span lower and my span upper, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do zeros all the way across here. And for my upper, uh, I can put in, I believe, uh, what's it showing here? Eight nines. And that's the highest total. Inputs, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put down gallons here. Okay, and, and there we go. Now what I'm also going to show you here is because, you know, eventually we're going to exceed this uh, if we were to leave it totalizing long enough. I'm going to show you a way to do a neat uh, trick here where uh, you can periodically reset your totalizers. So I'm going to go down here to Math Alarm. And I'm going to go On. I'm going to set a high value and I'm going to go Input. And I'm essentially going to set this at Something like, uh, what's that going to be? That's going to be like 10 million. And I'm going to go on, 
And remember how I said we could trigger stuff with switches? Well, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go switch number two here. And I'm going to show you basically when this total hits 10 million, I'm going to have it reset the totals and start totalizing from the beginning. So I don't run into a case where I've exceeded the maximum for that totalizer. So what we'll see over time is I'm going to total all the way up to 10 million. Then I'm going to trigger a math reset and then my totalization is going to start again. This way I don't have to worry about accidentally exceeding my totalizations and then kind of not having proper totals in the future until somebody goes in there and does a manual math reset. So now I'm going to escape out of here. I'm going to go down to this T log rolling average. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and increment or I'm already on channel 101, which I was totalizing uh, T log type. Uh, this is where you can kind of pick the type of uh, T log you're doing. So in, in this case, I'm just going to leave it uh, timer one, timer number one, some scale. I was doing gallons per minute, so I'm going to go down there and hit minutes. Okay. And uh, reset. So essentially what you can do is uh, as your timer kind of goes through its motions, and I'll show you where you can do a timer, like say you wanted to do a three hour timer or something like that. You could essentially reset that total every three hours. I'm going to leave that off for now since I don't want to reset my total. Okay. All right. So I'm going to hit escape out of here now. Escape. This is where I could go down to set my timer that I was talking about there. Hit enter. Okay. And I could say relative absolute. In this case, I'm not going to worry about any specific times like one hour, five hour, three hour resets. I'm just going to leave it off for now just so it'll act like as an indefinite totalizer. Okay. But I'm going to go down here to this event action. Remember how we uh, set up uh, a event on uh, switch number two for that totalizer. Well, I'm going to go down here to event and I'm going to go switch and I'm going to go switch number two. And then I'm going to do next and I'm going to pick math reset down at the bottom. So essentially when my total hits, you know, the 10 million now, I'm just going to reset my math, which resets my totalizers. Okay. Remember how we also had a uh, switch on uh, that alarm for temperature in my office. Well, I can go here for logic box number one and increment that down at the bottom to logic box number two, go down here, pick switch again, this time pick switch one. And I can do various other things. If we take a look down at the bottom, I could do memory start, stop, math, math, start, math, stop, next, reset, uh, save the display. In this case, I'm just going to choose to do a snapshot. Okay. So essentially when I get an 80 degrees high alarm, I'm going to take a snapshot of the screen and save that off as a picture. Okay. And I'm going to hit enter there. So now I've set up switch one and switch two as event actions, as well as set up an actual totalizer. Next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my group set trip line, pick that. I'm going to go down on group. I'm just going to call this home down here for my group name. All right, so I'm going to put that in very quickly using my keypad. All right, down here, I'm going to say what channels I want in here. So I'm going to go input. I'm going to go with one and two, and I'm going to go 101 for my totalizer, and then I'm going to delete the rest of them. Alrighty. So there I've set up my group with just what I want to see. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to escape out of here. And what we can see here is uh, I've uh, got my temperature coming in on one. I've got minus over right now because my calibrator turned itself off. I'm using a CA11 Handycal by Yokogawa. So if I go ahead and power it back up. And once I power it back up, I'm going to then turn the output on. We should now see, there I go. I got my gallons per minute there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and increment this up. So uh, I'm sending it a about 50% of scale here type signal. You can see I've got my uh, 25 gallons per minute coming in. 
You can notice that uh, down at the bottom, uh, 101, that's where my flow total is. That's not going anywhere. And the reason that's not going anywhere is I haven't turned on my math or my recording yet. So I'm going to go ahead and hit my start button now. That's going to start firing stuff up. And now you can start seeing, hey, I'm starting to totalize. And if we were to let this run a minute at 25 gallons per minute or 250 gallons per minute, uh, we're going to see that, uh, you know, hopefully I'll uh, hit a total of about 250 in one minute. All right, so we know that that totalizer is running away there. If I go ahead and, uh, you know, bump up my voltage a little more, you know, say I'm sending it uh, something like, uh, you know, 313, I can run it all the way up to full scale. You know, there, I've gone ahead and uh, given it the, the full uh, 20 milliamp signal or 5 volts across the resistor. And we're totalizing away. I can uh, drop it back down. Now I'm back down to pretty much zero here. And uh, we should see that our gallons per minute is uh, really dropped off here. Okay, and we can see that our totalizer is also doing that. So what I've shown you here is how to configure a couple channels, one for temperature, uh, one for flow, and how to configure a math channel to do a totalizer. And uh, away it's totalizing. All right, and just to kind of show you what would happen if that math uh, reset happened when it hit 10 millions, I'm gonna manually invoke that. So I'm gonna hit the function key right now. I'm gonna go next, and I'm gonna pick math reset. And when I hit that math reset, you can see how my totalizer down at the bottom there, the gallons, hits zero. Already, so that's what would happen if the uh, event that we set for switch to hit that 10 million. We'd see a math reset, and once again, we'd see that totalization on the gallon hit to zero. Now, the other thing you might see here is uh, in the case of flow, if uh, you're really close to bottom and you don't want to totalize those uh, kind of like bouncing zeros and stuff like that, uh, you can also set low flow cutoff. And uh, I'll show you that in a, another video on how to do more advanced math. But the idea there is essentially, you know how we set up that math channel to totalize? Instead of totalizing the raw input, like I did there when I just said totalize channel two, what I'd do is I'd set up another math channel. I'd go math channel 101, where essentially right there, I'd say something like, hey, uh, open parentheses two dot L E dot K1, which is a math constant, close parentheses, star two. So essentially what I'm saying there is, hey, if the flow coming in on channel two is less than or equal to a math constant, and I'd set that to zero, then multiply that true false one zero result by the actual flow rate in channel two. And what would happen there is in math channel 101, I would now have either zero or a true flow rate. And then in math channel 102, I'd do a T log sum, but instead of doing the T log sum of the raw flow for channel two, I'd do a T log sum of math channel 101 that now contains a calculation that basically cuts off my low flow. So I never totalize in reverse or uh, I never totalize those kind of bouncing zeros. So anyways, I hope this uh, helps and uh, take care. Have a great day.